this is the Provoke Prawn, and this is the Ava Media live streamer Mike 330, also known as the AM 330. This is a dynamic XLR microphone that's designed for content creators and live streamers with a broadcast quality audio and a number of other highlights that make it interesting, not least of which is the price. This is a really affordable XLR microphone that will set you back around £92 sterling, which is very affordable. Now, I am using this microphone for the voiceover for this video so you can get an idea of the quality of it. And if you've watched my videos in the past, you'll know that I usually use the Shure SM7B. And as you'll hear, the audio quality is very comparable to that microphone. And that mic is four times as much money. So this is already, as you can see, a really interesting microphone because it's incredible value for money in terms of the audio capture quality. There are some other highlights to it as well that I'll be going over as I unbox and review this microphone for you. I'm going to show you what's included in the box, talk about the setup process, show how to mount it on Rode's PSA1 boom arm, do a brief comparison with the Shure SM7B a bit later on in the video, talk about the settings that I'm using for the GoXLR to get the best sound out of it for me personally that might work for you too and much more besides. I'm also going to talk about the specifications and other interesting highlights. For example, simple little things like the fact that they include an XLR cable in the box, which is fairly unusual and not something you'll see. Now, it is an XLR microphone, so you do need a preamp like the GoXLR or Ava Media's live streamer Nexus Watch. I'm doing a video on separately and I'd recommend checking that out because that is a really interesting device as well. And I'll cover off why that's interesting later on, but it is essentially the same as the Go XLR, but it also has basically a stream deck built into it because it has a touchscreen display with multiple buttons and points of interest in it. It's pretty cool. Inside the box of the Ava Media Mic 330, though, you get the microphone itself, a ring that you can swap out on the top, a thread to mount it on the boom arm, and that included XLR cable, as I was saying. And obviously the microphone itself, which is fairly understated, but a very nice microphone with some really nice highlights to it. For example, not only is it able to capture really good quality audio, as you can hear, but it also has a built-in pop filter. It also doesn't require phantom power, which means you don't need a really beefy bit of kit in order to run it. This is a cardioid polar pattern pickup microphone, which basically means you need to talk into the top of it. And I'll show what I mean a bit later on with that, but basically you can't talk into the sides. And as you see, fairly understated in terms of what's on the body. It has a good solid weight to it, it feels really good premium quality. And it has a mic mute button that you can slide on and off there. And I'll show you a bit later on why that's a poor design there, and that's one of the low lights of this. And then on the underside is where you clip in the XLR cable. Now this microphone has a frequency response of 50 hertz to 18 kilohertz. And I'll leave all the other specifications, including the weight and such, in the description. But what I can confirm is that it does work with the Rode PSA, although I have had to do some tightening on that to get it to stay in place, because it is a bit lighter weight. But that doesn't mean it feels flimsy. It certainly feels like a premium product with a good solid outer shell. You will note that it doesn't come with any sort of shock mount or anything like that, though. And I'll talk about why that's a problem a bit later on but otherwise a very nice mic. Now, one issue that I have noticed is that it doesn't have a windshield. And again, I'll show you why that's a problem. And you might even have noticed it already as I'm doing this voiceover, but we'll talk about that in a bit more depth later. One thing I do like is that it has this replaceable ring on top. So as standard, it comes with this red ring installed, which has a nice nifty little aluminum sort of finish to it and a really nice accent on it but if you don't like that you can take it out and replace it with like the gunmetal silver ring that will go over there instead now as i said you need to talk into where this ring is essentially that you need to point the mic at you and get it close to get the best sound which is the same sort of logic with the Shure SM7B and any microphone, really, the closer you get it, the better it sounds, as long as you're not putting your lips on it and breathing right into it. But I was really surprised by the quality of the sound that this microphone delivers. It does pick up a lot of background audio unless you do some tweaks with compressor settings and other things to eliminate that with a noise gate. But otherwise, it sounds really, really good. Now, in the box, you get the adapter, which will screw in, and then that allows you to mount it on the boom arm. You can essentially 
mount this on any boom arm. I'm using the Rode PSA1, but I'm also going to show the Shure SM7B mounted on the Blue Compass boom arm, which is my usual favorite. However, I got a Rode PSA1 because I want to see what I show a side by side comparison of these and also do a video separately in the near future on those two boom arms if you're interested to come back and check that out. And as I said, I'll be doing a comparison. I'm going to do a separate video to go in depth and compare this Ava Media microphone with the Shure mic. Although they are vastly different in price, I think they're worth talking about in terms of the audio quality and the overall design of them. The Ava Media represents a fantastic value for money. As I said, it's essentially four times cheaper than the Shure microphone. And yet, as you can hear, it captures some really nice, good quality audio when you've got the settings right. And I will show those settings in the description and later on so you can witness them. But here you can see some close up shots of it. And what you'll notice is an interesting venting on the left and right and overall design of it. But if you try and talk around that side, you will find that you can't really be heard. So if I try and talk around that now, you won't really hear me very well. And it cuts out a lot of that. But what that means is, is if you get it at the right angle and close enough to you and keep the gain down, then you won't necessarily pick up things like the noise of keyboards in the background and fan noise and other things so you can focus on your voice. But it did require a little bit of fiddling to get it sounding good. And I'll show you what I mean with that shortly. Now, the other thing that's interesting about the design of this is the way that it's set up and the way you mount it on the boom arm. So I'll show you that now because you have the option to basically revolve it around and turn it and get it into various positions. You have to mount it with the mind that you're going to be installing it so you can get the front and top of that microphone close to your face in order to get the best quality sound out of it. Obviously, it doesn't have a desk mount of any sort included in the box. So you need to get a boom arm or something to put it on or a mic stand. This is the Rode PSA1, which isn't a cheap boom arm, but is known to be a very good quality. I have done a video recently on this boom arm and how you can use it to mount a camera on it. I've done a DSLR camera on there that I've mounted on my main desk. But I actually purchased another one for the purposes of reviewing this microphone and to be able to show you how to mount it on there. It's fairly straightforward, so you basically need to just loosen the thread. Now, any boom arm that you get will basically have the same style screw thread to it like this, and then you can essentially just pop your microphone on there once you've installed the adapter. You basically screw that on and tighten it up and then you can use that little plate on the bottom to tighten again the other direction so it's solidly locked into place. And you can easily adjust the positioning of it once you've done that as well. So turn it around, point it at an angle. So it's really gonna vary depending on where you've mounted the boom arm, whether you mount it at the back of your desk. I've got mine off to the side, for example. But also you can tweak the tightness of the stand on this and adjust the microphone into different positions too, both on the boom arm and on the mic stand there. But one thing that I will show you in a second is once you have the XLR cable plugged in, you can't because it is chunky and long and it's not as easy to adjust. So it's worth bearing that in mind. Now I've opted to basically have it so the Ava Media logo is displaying in the right direction so you can read it when you're seeing it on the camera because I think that's probably the better look, but you might choose to get it in a slightly different position. Now, just to show the setup of the Rode, in case you don't know already, and this is how you do it. So basically, the Rode PSA can be mounted in two different ways. You can screw it into your desk if you make a hole in it, or you can attach this base to it and then just pop the arm in itself that way. And once you've done that, it's just a case of setting it out. It then has ties that you can tie the XLR cable along the inside of it. And I'll do a video, a very short video soon on how to tighten the arm in case you find that it springs all over the place because I found this mic to be a little bit light and so it was springing up and down when I didn't want it to but it is easy to get it into a position where you can basically set the boom arm in a certain spot and it will stay there. But as I was showing and talking about a minute ago, the XLR cable is a bit long, the one that's included as standard the attachment that's there so you can't easily move the microphone. So you need to sort of work out which position you're going to have it in, depending on whether the boom arm's coming up from below you or from the side or above. And so you can see here, for example, that I basically got it upside down because the logo is the wrong way around, but you could choose to unplug it, turn it around on the boom arm itself and switch it around. Also the consideration is whether you're gonna use that mic mute button, the switch there, and how easy that is to access with your thumbs or fingers when you need to. So you just switch it around on the boom arm, you can flick it around and then set it back into position. 
but what you can't do is easily move it on its own stand with that cable attached because there's not that much flexibility in that. This is obviously the included XLR cable. You could potentially get a shorter one, but you usually have that quite chunky attachment, so it'll probably be the same issue with every one of them. Something to bear in mind, but the setup is easy enough because you can really easily loosen these connections and adjust it into a position you want, and then tighten it up so it's much tighter. So on the right hand side, you can see the short SM7B mounted on my blue compass boom arm, which is my usual favorite. And you see because of the way that's set up with the mount going into the top, the cable's not directly attached to the microphone, and therefore it gives you a bit more flexibility in how you can adjust it. But again, you're still slightly limited and the positioning is really a personal preference, but the aim and goal is to get it into a comfortable position. Now you can see the live streamer Nexus box controller, which I shall be doing a video on in the near future. On the right hand side of that, you'll see the full size Go XLR, which is the control box I'm using at the moment. But I'm also going to do a video on this Nexus box, so be sure to check that out because that's going to be really interesting. And now I'm going to dive into more about the mic. And here we are with the Ava Media microphone mounted on Rhodes PSA boom arm, which you can see here. And this is a microphone test with it plugged into the Go XLR, full size Go XLR. And I actually have this set up with the same settings that I use on my Shure SM7B, which is my standard, which is my usual microphone. And I'm going to do a separate test to show you the difference between those. But the reason I wanted to keep the same audio settings is to show you the difference that that makes because the short SM7B requires a bit more tweaking in order to get sounding correct because it's quite low and some people believe it requires a cloud lifter in order to work but it actually works really well with the GoXLR without any problems. I don't use a cloud lifter, you just need to go close to your mouth and have the right settings within the GoXLR to pick up the right audio without picking up loads of background noise. What I wanted to be able to demonstrate is the difference this makes with the Ava Media microphone because this mic doesn't require as much in terms of gain in order to make it sound good and to pick up your voice in a nice way. But with the same settings carried across, it will likely pick up a lot of background noise. Now this mic has a built-in pop filter, but it doesn't have a windshield on it. So one of the things I'm noticing while mic monitoring is I can hear a lot of my breathing on there. And if you blow into it, it picks it up really easily, which the short doesn't as much. It does if you get really close to it, and it is something that I have to cancel out sometimes in my voiceovers if I'm trying to get in close and make it sound good. But one another thing I've noticed is that it picks up a lot of the knocks and things, so it's picking up a lot of the sound. If I touch the boom arm, for example, or I'll just knock on the desk. Now, as I said, this isn't set up properly. I need to do some tweaking to make it sound the same or to cancel out a lot of that background noise. But just for an example, do some typing now. And you can see, I mean, you can probably hear that. I can hear it a lot, certainly through monitoring, that it's picking up a lot of the key sounds. And this is the Logitech G915 TKL, which is not particularly loud. It barely gets noticed on the Shure microphone. So that's the difference between those two. But obviously, some tweaking within the Go XLR will make some difference. Now I'm going to note in the description the settings that I use from a Shure microphone and I'm probably going to try and tweak it and recommend settings to use with this Ava Media microphone but I'm also going to be doing a video with the live streamer Nexus which is probably the better combination to go with this mic because that's what it was intended to be used for and therefore it shouldn't have this issue quite as much where it's as loud but the capture quality as you can see is really good it sounds fantastic it's got a really good sound to it really nice and rich sound that's obviously with the settings carried across again from the shore but it's picking up my voice in some pretty satisfying ways it sounds pretty good in terms of the richness and quality of it the only issues i think are at the moment is that just uh the puffs of breath and things like that but pop filter built in which is pretty unusual you don't usually see that very often there's obviously no shock mount in this setup uh, you could purchase an aftermarket one get that installed um, and it might be a thing because these knocks on the desk like I'm just tapping on the desk with my fingers so. be interesting to see what sort of sound it picks up from like a mouse 
This is a very loud mouse wheel, by the way. So I do a comparison with the Shaw now with it with the same settings just so you can see the difference. So this is with the Ava Media microphone through the GoXLR full size. And now I'm going to go over to the Shaw and show you the difference between the two. Now I'm recording with the Shaw SM7B. And as I said, same settings running through the GoXLR. And I just tap on the desk. You can't hear it. If I tap away on the keyboard. You can't hear it. And the mouse. You definitely can hear that. <laughs> Look, it's really obnoxious mouse. That's a separate point. This is the uh, HP Omen Vector, which is a nice mouse, but that mouse wheel is incredibly annoying. And that's a separate video entirely if you're interested in watching that one. But so the difference that you can see between the Shaw and the Ava Media is also the way these are set up. And I'll show this in some B-roll footage as well. But the way the XLR cable goes into the shore, you can see it comes in from the top up here. And then you have this sort of, you have this freedom of movement here. You can move it around a fair bit up and down. But what I've noticed with the Ava Media one is it doesn't really, because you have that problem there. And then you can basically get into a couple of positions, but it's not as easy to move around. Uh, but you can set it up in different ways, obviously. But it's quite a, this is the standard XLR cable that's included in the box. It's got quite a large attachment to the cable itself, so that kind of gets in the way of the stand. But you can change that around, obviously. Uh, the Ava Media is probably the nicer looking one. It has this nice red ring on it, which you can change out for a silver one. And it has these sort of vented bits on the side and obviously the Ava Media logo. And then a button on it as well. Whereas the Shaw only has the base roll off stuff on the back of it and not much else going on. It's quite a stealthy looking one, but it's instantly recognizable because if you know mics, then you know this from just seeing it. And um, it has two windshields in the box, this one, and then there's a fatter one. But picks up a lot less sound when you get it tweaked and I've got it set up pretty nicely in the Go XLR but I've got to go into depth in the settings and try and tweak it around with this and see if I can get it sounding better as well so check out the description for the setup of the Go XLR as it stands as I'm using it now and then I'm going to tweak it and come back and show you this with a better quality of sound to it so here I am back with the Ava Media microphone set up with the go xlr still and i've tweaked the settings ever so slightly so under noise gate i've actually changed it i initially thought i was going to have to change the complete settings and adjust the mic setup it's currently set with uh, 65 decibels under the mic setup for settings i usually have the threshold for noise gate at about 47 and what i found is basically by mashing the keyboard i can adjust the levels to get it to the right level so if i put it to 47 and then just tap on the keyboard so you can hear that. Obviously you can hear that now if I'm doing it down here on my desk. You can hear it's picking it up still. So now what I'm going to do is basically adjust the decibel level on the threshold so you can hear it so it stops capturing it. So you can see now I'm at 34. And I'm still doing it, but it's not picking it up anymore. If I move it here closer, it probably will, but... Actually, even there, it's not really picking it up anymore. And adjusting that has now meant that the mic quality sounds a lot better. You can still hear it if I breathe into it, but now it's not picking up the sounds of the keyboard anywhere near as much. Which is obviously fantastic. Simple adjustment, and as I said, I'm going to include these settings in the description so you can do the difference between them. But just so you can see quickly, I've got the threshold set to 34, attenuation is at 100%, attack is at 10 milliseconds, release is at 200 milliseconds, compressor is at minus 10 decibels, 4 to 1 ratio, 2 milliseconds attack, 100 milliseconds release, 1 decibel of makeup gain, and the DS is basically set to 50. Now, these are the settings that I've established to be the best 
for my microphone and my environment, including things like the noise of surrounding fans, the noise of my keyboard and things like that, you'll need to adjust it based on your own personal setup. And I'll link to a video by Harris Heller where he goes into a great deal of depth on the GoXR because that's very useful. And hopefully you'll find that useful too. And he talks about how you go about this process and what the difference is. But basically what I've done here is just the noise gate. So the compensation for removing background noise is basically changed on a decibel level. And obviously this is going to vary even depending on how far away the mic is from your mouth and things like this. But it's always best to get the mic close to your mouth as you possibly can. And then you get a much better quality of sound. And this one seems to have a really rich audio presence when set up like this as well, which is fantastic. It sounds really good. Just very comparable with the uh, Shure SM7B actually. And considering the price difference. Now obviously that required a lot of tweaking. And if I tap on the boom arm or move it around, you can still hear a little bit of it, but nowhere near as much. Now I've changed that threshold of decibels. It's much better, much, much nicer. So one thing that the Ava Media microphone has, which the Shaw doesn't, for example, is a mute button. So that button on the microphone is actually for muting. So I can carry on talking and then slide it off. And then you obviously can't hear me talking. But uh, I don't know if I like this, because if you listen, if I turn it on and off, you'll be able to hear the sound of me doing that. You have to be super gentle, otherwise you just as you'd rub that mic button off. Shows how much it picks up and it knocks. It's going to be really obvious. Now, obviously, you're not going to regularly do this, but I often bump into bump my chair into it if I get up to go to get a drink or something. It's very easy to accidentally bump the mic. Obviously, you might knock into it standing up to adjust something. Maybe you're just moving. If you've got to get a microphone up and close like this, personal, if you bump into it, it's quite quite noisy. And I do this regularly with the shore mic, but it doesn't pick up knocks as much. And I think because of the windshield and stuff, that sort of protects that, and you don't hear as much of the back of the of the noises and the knocks in it. So this suffers from that. And you can, like loud bangs on the desk, obviously going to be picked up by most microphones, but they're quite prominent in this. And even now, when I'm talking, if I bang on the desk at the same time you can hear the taps so again I've got a this is a really solid I mean you can see behind me the same sort of desk material it's a big thick wooden American walnut desk so it's not a thin thing that's going to just send vibrations through it's a good solid bit of wood and yet yeah, still picking it up so a shock mount might be a necessary evil to something like this and that's the sort of compromise you're getting. But the capture quality is really good, really good sound. I'm listening to it now with the mic monitoring, and it sounds just as good as the Shore. So I really think it's going to be a fantastic mic. And I'm going to do some test capture while playing some games to show what that's like as well. So stay with me, and we'll see what that's like. I'm going to try and be aggressive with my movements so you can hear it. must be located and diffused. Diffuser acquired. Move to bomb location and diffuse the device. Take an idea of me mashing the keyboard. Now this is a quiet keyboard. It's not a particularly loud one. But it's important to be able to hear the so die. You winning, son? Maybe. So in conclusion, the Ava Media Livestream and Mic 330 is a very nice microphone for the money with some fantastic audio capture, a nice overall aesthetic, and only a very small number of problems. Well worth considering. Be sure to check out the description for links to other videos you might find useful as well as more information on this microphone, and check back for the Livestream and Nexus review shortly. 
This has been the Provoke Prawn. Thanks for watching. This has been the Provoke Prawn. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video. Hope you found it useful, interesting, hilarious, or all of the above. Be sure to check out the description for other information you might find interesting and useful, as well as these other videos, and click that join button to find out the benefits of being a member of my YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.